Hello, everyone, and welcome to this webinar where I'm going to be sharing with you five asynchronous sessions that you should try on Bcast. So we'll be talking about a whole bunch of different um, asynchronous sessions. We'll be seeing a little bit more about what exactly are asynchronous sessions, also called participant mode, um, if for those of you who are familiar um, in Bcast. And we'll be looking at some um, key examples like training sessions, um, meetings, and things like this. All right, so just to get started, I'm going to make sure that everyone can hear me, see me. So while we wait for everyone to kind of join us, make sure that you are telling me if you can hear and see me, give me a thumbs up, and I'll just give everyone a couple minutes to get started. All right. I am seeing a little thumbs up, which means that everyone can see me. That's great. And you know what? Let's go ahead and dive right in. All right. Thanks, everyone, for letting me know. Perfect. Okay. So first thing I wanted to see with you guys when it comes to this webinar is what exactly is an asynchronous session? or asynchronous mode, as we call it. So basically, in BCAS sessions, we have two types of presentation mode, two types of ways that you can go from slide to slide. So we have synchronous, which is also called facilitator mode, and asynchronous, which is called participant mode. Synchronous sessions are moderated presentations uh, where everyone follows the facilitator as they change slides. So here, the facilitator has full control over the presentation. Asynchronous sessions, on the other hand, also called participant mode, allows participants to view the presentation at their own pace, which makes them completely autonomous. So this is also a great way of handling a session for training sessions, for example, because when you create a presentation, you create a training session, maybe you want your participants to be able to train themselves whenever they have time, right? And you want them to be able to join activities and go from slide to slide at their own pace. So then participant mode is going to be a key aspect of getting really good training sessions. But then, of course, you can use asynchronous sessions for a whole bunch of other um, presentations. And we'll be seeing this in this webinar today. So just to sum up very quickly, what makes asynchronous sessions interesting for you? Well, first of all, working asynchronously is going to allow you to save time in meetings because of this autonomy and flexibility that it offers. Basically, when you're working in, a, in participant mode, this means that anyone can access your session at any given time. So you kind of have this anytime, anywhere, any device um, flexibility that happens, which makes it so much easier for people, for example, that are working remotely to kind of access information at any given time. And also, kind of give you feedback as well because they can interact and they can answer questions, give you feedback and even brainstorm um, at any given time. And this is going to be just a really great way of working today where everyone is looking to be more flexible, right? So another example um, that I wanted to share with you is, for example, the idea that in participant mode, you're going to be able to kind of break up your uh, meeting dynamic. So it helps make meetings make meetings even more engaging because, of course, you can start out with an um, asynchronous session where everyone's going to come and share their ideas on their own time. And then the day of the actual meeting, you can use the information that was collected in a synchronous session, so in facilitator mode. And this is where everyone can kind of interact and um, discover all of the information um, together. So. As you'll see, it's just a really great way to energize your meetings and kind of create a different rhythm in your meetings and daily work lives. A quick little BCAST tip, be careful when you choose the scrolling mode because when you choose a mode, so participant or facilitator, um, 
asynchronous or synchronous, you won't be able to change this afterwards. So this happens when you create a BCAS session. And anytime you create a BCAS session, we're going to ask you, do you want your session to be synchronous or asynchronous? And whichever you choose, you won't be able to change it afterwards. So do keep that in mind because some people can feel a little bit blocked afterwards. Let's say you created this great um, synchronous session and then you realize, oh no, I actually wanted this to be asynchronous synchronous. So you won't be able to change that. But for those of you who may have had this happen to them, um, have no fear. I actually have a quick workaround for this, a quick little tip that I wanted to share with you. So let's imagine I had a presentation, a BCAS session in facilitator mode. And I realized that I actually wanted it to be in participant mode. So I wanted an asynchronous session. So here I am, I have my asynchronous session, but oh no, I have, I have of course lost all of my slides and all of my content. A great little feature that we have in Bcast is here when you're in your builder mode. So this is, I'm in my Bcast session as the owner of my session. So I can come and add a slide, for example. I'm going to click on this button right here on add a slide in my left column. And as you can see, I have all of my activities that I can create. But instead of creating an activity, if I already have slides and content that are ready to go, I can go right here to the right on import from session. And when I click on here, as you can see, I have all of these sessions that I have created in the past that are available. This means that if I click on five asynchronous sessions, I can go ahead and import an activity. So I could just click on import and I would immediately have the activities that I created in other sessions that would be imported in my current session. So just a quick little tip for you here. Um, do make sure that you kind of import content from time to time because, well, the more Bcast presentations and sessions you create, the more content you actually have in hand. And it goes, it's just so handy because it allows you to save a lot of time when creating content because instead of having to recreate the same activity over and over again, you can actually just import the activity and have all of the content there and ready to use. All right. So now what we're going to do in this session is I'm going to show you what a asynchronous BCAST session looks like from a participant's point of view. So to do this, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to copy my link to this asynchronous session. I'm just going to log out so you guys can keep seeing my screen. And as you can see, I now have my BCAS session in asynchronous mode. So this is, as you can see, I'm not identified anymore. I'm just a participant that had the link in hand, clicked on the link, and I am now on the BCAS session that was shared with me. All right. So in asynchronous mode, as you can see, you have access to some resources right here. We'll talk a little bit more about this later on. If I go down here, I can see the slideshow. So the reason why I can't see, for example, slide number five is because I haven't gotten to it yet. So when you're a participant in a um, asynchronous session, this kind of stays hidden because you can't, you have to go through the slides and it's a way of not cheating, of course, um, and seeing content that maybe hasn't been ready to be unveiled yet, isn't ready to be unveiled yet, sorry. and. Uh, I can just hide this, see my presentation. And if I want to go to the next slide, I just click on the arrow right here at the bottom right part of my screen. So I click on next. I have my little asynchronous definition. Click on next. And here we have our first example of a great asynchronous meeting. Feel free to add a message in the Livestorm chat if you have any questions along the way. I'm going to go ahead and dive right in. So the First session, asynchronous session that I wanted to share with you was a team meeting. At Bcast, we always recommend implementing team rituals. So depending on your company's personal practices, whether it's a weekly meeting, daily, or even just every two weeks, the goal of a team meeting is just to make sure that everyone has all the information they need to work efficiently together throughout the week. This is really important because when teams work remotely today, you have a lot of people that um, don't have the same level of information throughout the week. And it's kind of hard because when you're only meeting 
synchronously. You kind of have to ask all your questions at that given time. And then it's kind of gone. You know, you won't maybe have another opportunity in the week to meet with everyone and ask questions or see what everyone is working on and have a more global overview, general overview of what everyone is doing. So we're going to see how team meetings in asynchronous mode are actually really handy to get the right level of information throughout the week. And it's going to turn your meeting into just something that's really easy to access, kind of a daily resource that your team is going to be able to access at any given time. And a team meeting is also a great way for managers, especially to kind of find out how their employees are feeling about the week ahead, because it's a way for you to share the presentation um, beforehand before, for example, let's say you're meeting every Monday with your team synchronously. So this means that every Monday at 9am, I start my week with a team meeting, we're all there. Well, maybe on Fridays at maybe five or six at the end of the week, I go ahead and log into my asynchronous team meeting session. So in this asynchronous session, what I'm going to be able to do is, for example, think about my the last week's weather report. So I'm going to be able to say, hey, OK, so what was last week like for me? Was it great? Was it super sunny? No problems. Maybe it was sunny with some clouds. Maybe it was dark and rainy. You know, maybe it was a terrible week and um, I just am so happy that it's over. Well, this is something, this is information that as a manager, you get to know beforehand. So you get to start off Monday by looking at what all of your participants, what all of your colleagues have answered beforehand and saying, okay, so we're starting off the week and I can see that a lot of you had a, some trouble last week. So here, as you can see, we're kind of balancing out synchronous and asynchronous. Asynchronous sessions are allowing us to kind of gather information beforehand. So here, let's say that as a participant, Friday evening, you know what, I'm almost on vacation, still got a lot of work to do, but I'm very excited. So going to say sunny with some clouds. I'm submitting it. And once I've submitted, I can now go to the next activity. And so here, this is a time for me where I can kind of see what everyone is up to. So this is a um, board activity in Bcast. And as you can see, it's just a great way to see what everyone is currently doing in the team. So here you have important announcements. For example, I can see that this, this person in my team will be off from July 27th to August 15th. So I'm, I know that they won't be there. Um, they're on holiday. I also have kind of what everyone's been working on. Okay, so someone is on the marketing brand book. Okay, so that's something that is still in the to-do. But the SEO campaign is done. Okay, great. And I myself can also go ahead and add an idea. So I can say, well, currently I am working on the next webinar. So let's say for September. So that's something that I'm currently working on. And when that's done asynchronously, whenever that that um, task is finished, I can go ahead and move this task on over to the done category in the in this column. And that way, anytime another member of the team wants to log into this session, they can see that, oh, OK, great. Clara um, has already prepared the September webinar. Perfect. And we didn't have to meet. We didn't have to see each other in real time. This is just a great way to keep everyone updated on the work that's currently going on in your team. All right. So now I'm moving on to the next example. And here we're going to be talking about brainstorming. So when you're brainstorming with your team, um, this is usually something that everyone thinks has to be done at the same time together. Which I'm not saying isn't true because, of course, brainstorming is important um, work and it's much easier to brainstorm with people around you because that's where you get ideas flowing and you get to interact with people. And it's a really great way to kind of get everyone's input and, you know, get your mind working. But at the same time, brainstorming can also be highly efficient on your own time, because sometimes brainstorming sessions can be very long. Um, I have had, we have had at Bcast customers tell us that, you know, they have maybe three hour brainstorming sessions. And 
in three hours, no one is truly efficient given a certain time, you know, because it's a pretty long time to be creative. So what we recommend are asynchronous brainstorming sessions. And here the idea is just to use this more flexible method so to let participants contribute at their own pace. Because sometimes, you know, I'll be working on something and I'll have an idea and I'll be like, oh, I should have said that in last week's brainstorming session. But too late, that brainstorming session is over. Well, at BCAS, what we sometimes do is for certain projects where everyone is super busy, instead of saying, okay, I'm going to take two hours of your time this week um, to do a brainstorming session, instead of doing that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask participants, I'm going to share an asynchronous brainstorming session with my colleagues, and I'm going to say, hey, you have until um, next this time in two weeks to share with me your thoughts on a subject, on a topic. And over the next period of the, over the next 14 days, colleagues are going to be able to give their input, share ideas. And this is just a really great way to kind of gather ideas and, um, and yeah, get, get people's synergies kind of flowing because you're letting people interact on their own time. And sometimes an idea that you didn't have on Monday, maybe you'll get that idea on a Thursday. So this is just a great way to do this. And we're gonna be, I'm gonna be showing you a special brainstorming activity on the Canvas activity. I'm gonna show you how that works. And you'll see what's great about the Canvas activity is if you are the owner of the session, um, you're able to copy paste content. So for example, if you had two Canvas um, activities open in a BCAS session, you would be able to copy, um, for example, this post-it. You can copy and then paste it to another Canvas activity in a session. So this makes um, duplic duplicating content and reusing content just a lot easier to manage. All right, so as we can see, I am in my brainstorming session, and the way that it's presented is I have two topics, clearly, to get ready for September. I have, I can submit ideas for marketing, and I can submit ideas for the sales team. So as we can see right here, and let me just refresh this session because I feel like it may not be, okay, perfect, here we are. This is now in English, which will be a lot better for everyone. So as you can see, I have a quick little um, sentence up here that says, please complete this brainstorming before August 20th. So this is just to give me a little bit of a time indication. Okay, so I've we've shared this session with me and I have until August 20th to um, brainstorm. And then three days after that, the brainstorming is over, I'll be able to vote. So there will be a polling phase in this um, session. And the way that this works is any given time in the week, I can go ahead and just add my idea. So let's say for lead generation and marketing, I can say, okay, well, I think we need um, to come out with maybe three blog articles per week. And that can be my contribution. And then I can leave the session. And then two days later, if I have another idea, say, oh, wait, I read this awesome article about lead generation and I actually have another idea. And then I can add another idea. So once again, this is super easy. As you can see, it allows everyone to kind of brainstorm together, just not synchronously. And what's great about the feature um, column on the right side is that it also allows you to share messages. So for example, I can tell everyone, oh, okay, I saw that this other colleague in the message board, um, while they were doing the brainstorming session, they found a super cool article. Okay, great. So I can click on this and be redirected to the article. And then I myself can say, okay, well, thanks for sharing. And I can add my own little comment and post it. And this is also a really great way for people to kind of interact with each other asynchronously and be up to date on what everyone was thinking and things like that. So the message board is a great resource that you can use when doing asynchronous sessions. All right, moving on. I'm going to make sure that there are no questions so far. Okay, I see that no questions in the chat. If you do, do not hesitate. I'll be happy to answer. 
All right, so moving on, we're going to talk about project management. So project management is also a huge part of anyone's daily routine, especially for people working um, with large teams. When, you're, when you launch a project, you want to be able to follow up really easily and really efficiently on those projects with your team. Except sometimes you have a lot of people working together and it's not always easy to ask people to, to kind of meet with everyone synchronously at the same time. So what we do with asynchronous sessions is we want to make sure that everyone can kind of take stock of current progress. So what everyone has been doing, maybe even avoid delays, because this is also an opportunity to see, OK, are we on time? If we're not on time, what is a potential roadblock that we're facing? And so with the board activity, once again, I'll show you how you can get a really clear overview of the project at all times and how you can also easily share documents and resources in um, our, our resource area right here on the, in the right column, which is also what we call the tabs feature. So we'll also be talking about actions and decisions, which is another feature in our left column. That way you'll be seeing every type of feature and how to handle these features asynchronously. All right, so in project management, I wanted to share with you two ideas. So there are kind of two ways um, that you can create a board to um, manage your projects. The first one, as you can see, is more of a macro planning where I get to see different types of sprints. So for those of, for any agile teams out there, anyone watching this webinar and that works um, in agile methods, this may be familiar to you because sprints are usually two week um, two week project modes. So basically, a team is going to set um, tasks and goals and every Every two weeks, they have to finish those tasks before moving on to the next phase. So when you're working in sprints, the one way that you could do this is, as you can see, each column represents a sprint. And so here we have a little color code. So this allows us to see that sprint one was pretty much done. We still have feedback on the first version of the logo that needs to be approved and before moving on, but it's just in progress. It's gonna be done, nothing blocked yet. And then I get to see that in sprint two, okay, so what's happening in sprint two? We are currently in sprint two and what? And we have the V2, um, V2 conception phase. So we're moving on to the second version of our logo. Um, we also have things that are yet to be done. So we have content creation templates, team feedback. So clearly team feedback is something that's gonna become very important. And then we can even see that people have started planning sprint three, where we know that, okay, sprint three, one thing that needs to be done is we need to have the final version of the logo. We also need to see if we need to handle dark mode, for example. So as you can see, this is a great way to kind of get a macro um, overview, a very wide overview of how the project is evolving. And thanks to this asynchronous mode, once again, all of your colleagues are going to be able to um, join this session and see the planning by the, on their own time, whenever they feel like it, whenever they want to update um, their colleagues on what they've been doing, what's done, if they have any problems. So this is just a great way when you're doing project management to make sure that everyone is on the same page and that everyone has the same level of information. Um, one thing that I really like when it comes to asynchronous mode is the taps feature because in Bcast, we allow you to share um, resources. And so as you can see, um, we can imagine that, oh, okay, someone has shared with us the first um, version of the logo. So while they're waiting on feedback, I can go ahead and access um, the, the picture of the logo. So if I click on here, I'm going to be able to download the design proposition. So this is a great way to give everyone access to resources without everyone having to kind of be like, oh, this was shared in maybe a Slack channel and I lost it since then. No, here you are making sure that all of the key information, documents and resources is stored in one space. And this space is dedicated to your project management, to your actual current project. So tabs is really great. Moving on to another version of this project management template. This is more of a micro overview, right? So instead of seeing multiple sprints, multiple weeks ahead, we're seeing 
what is currently being done. So this is what has to be done. This is what's in progress. This is done and this is blocked. So this is potentially something that we need to see very quickly in order to keep the project moving along. Once again, I can go ahead as a participant, as you can see right here, I'm a participant, I wanna add my idea. Okay, so um, maybe what's in progress for me currently is um, giving, is I have to give, of course, can't spell. <laughs> right now, they have to go on vacation sooner than later. Okay, give feedback on the logo proposal. And I can just click on send, and I immediately have my um, little task that has to be done, and I can manage that task along the way. So here it's in my to-do. Um, whenever I start working on this project, I can move it into in progress. Everyone can see that this has been done. I can also, once it's done, say that it's done. So yeah, it just gives everyone a really agile way to keep everyone updated on what's currently happening in this project. And what I recommend as well is, for example, if you want to kind of have a written report of actions and decisions. So what has been decided, for example, let's say that um, the V1 proposal has finally been approved. Well, I can go in actions and I can see that, oh, okay, was this approved or not? Well, actually V1 isn't approved yet. At least I can't see it in any written report that says it's been done. But what I can see is that the mood board was approved and so people that our design artists could start planning V1. And let's say that in our previous, in a previous meeting or during a even a brainstorming session, we all voted saying that the mood board was approved and the V1 was approved. I can say, okay, so we made a decision. V1 was approved. And I can give some details if I want. And I can't click here because we are currently in an anonymous session where so we have avatars, which means that we are not connected to our Bcast account. But if you are connected to a Bcast account and you are identified in this Bcast session, thanks to your Bcast account, you can even select who took this decision, who made this decision. So I can just click on confirm. And there we have it. We now have written proof that V1 was approved. So yeah, actions and decisions is actually great. Um, as you can see, dis, um, actions is also a way in project planning um, and project management to tell to to tag people and say, oh hey, someone has to work on, someone has to publish the replay. So is this in progress? Is it done? Is it to do? And I can say, oh okay, well actually I have published the replay. This is done. Or oh I haven't done this yet. I have to do it. I also have my little deadline, so I know that this has to be done by July 26th. And because it's in orange, it's fairly important. It's starting to be an actual, um, a very important task. All right, coming back to see if anyone has any questions. I see that that's not the case. Once again, feel free to ask. I'll be, I'm always happy to answer. And I'm also joined by Umaima in my um, link in my um, current live storm session, and she'll be happy to answer in the chat as well. All right, let's move on with a third activity that you can create for project management, which is the level of confidence in pro in um, in the current project progress. So, for example, when you are doing this type of um, activity, it's always interesting as a manager to know week after week how people are feeling about the project. So the level of confidence people have in the project's current progress. And I can say, oh, okay, well, before finishing my session, hey, I'm actually fairly, fairly confident that we'll be able to um, finish this project on time. Um, progress is going really well. I'm happy with what's been done. Um, of course, maybe we still have a couple things to work on, maybe some things to catch up on, but so far, so good. I can click on confirm and automatically, as you can see, I have my answer and I can see that I've already answered this question and I can now move on. Um, please note that one thing to, to know as a participant is the reason why I have to answer these um, activities is because if I don't answer the activities, I can't move on to the next 
part of my of my session. So you, I didn't show you beforehand, but before answering this, I couldn't have clicked on next. I had to answer before moving on to the next part. All right, so I'm gonna speed it up a little bit because I'm giving everyone a lot of information and I may be going a little bit over um, our time limit. So we're gonna go with our um, before last example, which is e-learning. So e-learning is a huge part of asynchronous um, methods because today when people are training um, themselves or when you are trying to train teams and, and, and have learners with you, it's really important that you engage them and but also that you give them ways to train themselves throughout their career, for example. So in a company, people want to learn, but it's always hard to find the time to, to learn and to sign up to training sessions. So what we do with Bcast is we allow you to create e-learning asynchronous sessions that your learners and um, participants are going to be able to join at any given time so that they can kind of get themselves certified, trained, and they can understand new concepts. So how this works is, for example, here, I wanted to share with you a pretty cool um, um, way of training people, which is thanks to our integrations. So on Bcast, we have um, Prezi and Genially integrations, which means that you can create a presentation on Genially and then import it into a Bcast, your Bcast session. So as you can see, this is pretty cool because this is going to allow me to discover Bcast in Microsoft Teams. I have, I know that this is a Genially presentation, but I can interact on the presentation directly in Bcast which allows you to create slides, as you can see, that are just a lot more interactive. So here as a participant, I could click on info. Okay, so I know this is a quick tutorial. I'm gonna be able to click on um, the buttons here and start kind of trying it out. So for example, if I click on plus, I can see that, oh, this is where I can add slides directly in my meeting, pretty cool. What is this? Oh, okay, so this is where I can see my shared PCAST session. If I click on the plus sign right here, this is where I can add the Bcast app. So if I wanted to add the app in Microsoft Teams, I'd click on the plus sign. And if I wanted to share this session with the rest of my um, Microsoft Teams participants, I would click right here. So it's just a really fun way. You can kind of go around, click, um, even add sound, and it just makes your learning modules a lot more interactive thanks to these integrations in Bcast. Moving on, um, once I have um, once I've tested my, um, per, once, well, actually, once, sorry, once that, once I've shared content with my learners, for example, um, what we just, what we've just seen previously, or even a video, for example, I can test their knowledge immediately afterwards to see and make sure that they've understood and acquired the knowledge that I've shared with them. So here, this is a quick, um, little quiz, which asks people to put um, in the right order, the steps to add a BCAS session in Microsoft Teams. So for example, I would have to start by joining my Teams meeting. Then I'm going to maybe search and select the BCAS application. So that's, oh, first I'll have to click on apps, of course. Um, then search for the Bcast app, log into my Bcast account, and then import my Bcast session. I'll submit it. And I now know that I had all of the right answers. So I answered correctly. And I've just won three points. So as the owner of the session, the owner of the session will be able to see that I won three points and that so far I understood everything correctly. This was just to show you, um, you can also add videos. So if you wanna, if you have video modules, if you wanna do um, quick video modules to show people, to teach people things, you can also add videos directly in a BCAS session and then create a quiz for them to kind of test their knowledge on the video they've just seen. Moving on, we're gonna finish off this, um, this webinar by um, the final part, uh, the final example of an asynchronous session, which is ending interactions. So how do you conclude? How do you finish off a presentation asynchronously? Well, actually what, what we think is a great idea when you're using an asynchronous session is that asynchronous sessions are actually great to collect feedback because once you finish an event, a training session, a meeting, 
people are just, they just want to go. They want to leave pretty quickly for most of our um, of our customers, that's usually what they tell us is, well, they don't really have time to give you to give you feedback um, at just in present. So what you do is you just share with them an asynchronous BCAS session and you tell them, hey, whenever you have time, come back to this and tell us what you thought. And this is just a great way to first, of course, make sure that the information that you share during a presentation was understood and assimilated. So you want to make sure maybe you can quiz people, you can ask them what they thought, things like that. But it's also just a great way to gather feedback. So you don't necessarily have to make sure that people understood, even though I highly recommend you do. But you can also just get feedback and say, and in order to continuously improve your sessions and presentations. And so facilitating feedback, we highly recommend you use um, sessions, um, sorry, activities that can be anonymous, because, for example, we have the form activity, the board activity, and the metaphor activity that can be, be fully anonymous, which means that when people answer, they will not be identified, which makes it a lot easier to kind of get people comfortable sharing their thoughts and giving you feedback because they know that they won't be able to be identified in the session. So to show you how this works, this is going to be, it's going to be your turn um, to share with us your feedback on um, in an asynchronous session. So you're going to be able to try this out for yourselves. And I'm going to share with you right here the link to join us on a, an, the asynchronous session. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and click on my asynchronous session. I've shared with you the link on the Livestorm chat. You can join the session and you'll automatically be able to give me your feedback. So let me just share my screen with you. All right, so I've I clicked on the link. It sent me to a new um, tab. And as you can see, I have a little welcome um, message that allows me to start the feedback session. So first thing that I can see is I can answer, hey, true or false, BCAS is integrated into Microsoft Teams. So if all of you have been paying attention, you have the answer to this because we talked about it briefly and you'll be able to um, share with me your answers. So as the owner um, and even as the host of this webinar, I'll be happy to make sure that everyone understood uh, what I presented to them and just kind of see if everyone was keeping up with me along the way. So I'm going to give everyone a little bit of time to answer, but I'm not going to wait too long. So I'm going to go ahead and give you the answer, which is true. We are integrated into Microsoft Teams. As you can see, just to show you right now, I can't go to the next slide. So I do have to submit my answer. Once I've submitted the answer, I actually don't have, um, I don't know if I got the right or wrong answer. This is a feature that you can completely set up as the owner of the session. So you decide whether the participant knows if they got the right or wrong answer. Um, it's either whenever they answer the, the activity, they'll know immediately, or they have to finish the entire session before um, knowing if they got the right or wrong answers. So now, um, quick little feedback. Thank you for joining us. What did you think of this webinar? And um, you can go ahead and give me your rating. So I'm going to give myself a pat on the back and say five, um, but I'll see if everyone agrees or not. Um, I always look forward to feedback. So confirm. And then I can go ahead and share my own personal feedback with a little word cloud. So I can say maybe, hey, like still have a question. I can also see other people um, answering. So thank you so much for those of you who are joining me on this session and, um, and giving me some keywords. So thank you, actually, and amazing. Okay, good to know. But as you can see, you, ha you now have a fun little word cloud that collects all of the feedback and all everyone's thoughts, which is just a great way to end um, your session synchronously, but also asynchronously. All right, so I'm going to end it here. Thank you so much for joining me. I ran a little bit over time. Um, we're about 
a l we're a little bit late, but that's okay. I was happy to give you guys as much information as I could. Um, asynchronous sessions, there's so much that you can do with Bcast, as you have seen. I hope this gave you a couple tips and tricks um, that you'll be able to use further on. And if you have any questions, make sure to contact us. We always look forward to answering and um, helping you create the best Bcast session out there. All right. Thanks, everyone. Um, for those of you who maybe are finishing their day because it is five um, here in France, um, hope you have an excellent rest of your day. I hope you have a nice evening. Um, for those of you who maybe are leaving um, to finally go on summer break, have a lovely vacation. Hope everyone gets the rest that they need and deserve. And I'll be seeing you very soon for our next webinar, which will be happening in September. Um, to kick off the, 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 the next part of our year. All right. Thanks everyone for joining me. Hope you have an excellent rest of your day and I'll see you very soon. Thank you.